Hi everyone, I'm Jacob Z. Flores, and I'm going to be reading a small excerpt for you today from the fourth and final book of the Provincetown series, and it is titled, When Love Comes to Town. Brody had wanted answers to his questions, but how was he supposed to ask them? Accusing a nine-year-old girl of having an ulterior motive wouldn't earn him any brownie points. And since Maddie was always at their side, he couldn't very well ask Eric what Maddie's questions had been about. He had no choice but to leave them unanswered, at least for the time being. Maddie's screech from down the beach got his attention. Right now, her father was chasing her around, trying to catch her and throw her in the water. They had been playing that game since Maddie had finished asking about marriage, love, and second husbands. It had come on so suddenly he couldn't help but see, see it for what it was, a diversion. But just what was Eric trying to avoid? Brody! Maddie screamed. She zigged while Eric zagged and was able to increase the distance between them. Help me! I don't get between a father and his daughter, he called back. She replied by sticking out her tongue, but unfortunately that little gesture caused her to lose ground. Her father lunged at her and snagged her by her elbow. Eric then hauled her over his shoulder and headed toward the water. Brody laughed. Whatever the reason for Eric's sudden interest in tormenting Maddie, it was working. How could he focus on finding answers when the two of them were being so adorable? He really needed to stop that. He'd already accepted that he and Eric were, going, were not going to happen. They were destined to be friends. That was it. He was going to be here for Eric, help make him smile, especially since Eric appeared to be in dire need of a good time. Suddenly, Manny rushed past him and sprinted down the beach. How the hell did she get away from Eric? Eric came lumbering after her. He had to do something to come to Maddie's rescue. So, as Eric ran past him, Brody leaped upon his back. The force unsteadied Eric, who teetered to one side. This caused Brody to fall off Eric and land on his back in the warm sand. Eric tried to catch himself, but the force of Brody's body first landing on him, then falling off, sent Eric into a spin before he crashed on top of him. In the distance, Maddie's laughter echoed back to him, but all Brody could focus on was Eric's heaving body pressed on top of him. His frame fit against him quite comfortably, as if they were missing pieces to each other's puzzle. Did Eric notice that too? Was that why his amber eyes, which had previously gazed down at him in wide surprise, no longer looked embarrassed? Instead, a sly grin caught the right corner of his mouth and hooked it upward. Fuck, that was hot. And why did he have to smell so damn good? A heady mixture of sweat and aftershave drifted in the air. Then there were the hot pants of, of air that blew across Brody's cheeks. Each exhale fanned a fire that rapidly consumed him from within. If it not for his self-control, he'd have craned his neck and stolen a kiss, but that was completely inappropriate especially in front of Maddie. I think it might be time to get up, Brody said. His voice was low and throaty. Did he really need to be speaking with a bedroom voice at the moment? His vocal cords seemed to think so. They were no doubt working in collusion with the erection that took up all the room in his underwear. Oh, great. He had an erection, and Eric was on top of him. There was no way he could hide that. But wait a minute. What was growing in Eric's shorts?